Yeah, honestly, that's that's a super difficult question. Uh, I guess you know one of my I guess one of my heroes is Ash Thorpe and kind of how how he approaches his personal work, right? And how he so he's like so passionate about um, you know doing something that you know like it's it's quite selfish when you think about it. But I think all artists, you know, when 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 we create our work, it, it is somewhat selfish, right? Um, but I mean, selfish in a good way in the sense that it's really important to uh, do things that are, are just, you know, you're, you're almost like your childhood muses, right? Like what, what just excites you at the end of the day. Right. So, I mean, I, I really like his approach and I, I really take that, um, take that approach kind of in, in how I do my work, um, in the sense that, yeah, like, like I have these skills in, in my tool bag, but, you know, I'm always trying to like improve, you know, one thing or another. And it's like, okay, so like, how can, like, what, what projects can I do to, um, to help me improve those skills? Right. Um, and kind of, yeah, take that Ash, Ash Thorpe approach where it's like, just, ju- just do something that, you know, you're most, you're, you're most passionate about. Right. Um, and just to go, yeah, like dive, dive into the deep end as far as whatever that subject is or like whatever that muse is, right. Whatever that inspiration is, just, just do that thing. Right. Um, and and I think it, it's almost like um kind of like what what Beeple was doing right like you know he he's he's been doing I guess what what he's most passionate about for like you know ten fifteen years right um and it's 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 really just important to you know as as an artist just to just to really kind of believe in in what inspires you right and and to keep doing that because I think if you do that with a passion and you do it you know, um, with a certain honesty about it, I think people will see that and gravitate towards that. Welcome to the Learn Spread podcast, and I'm delighted to welcome today's guest, Michael Yoshimura. Michael is an exciting designer whose creative curiosities have helped him forge a path that combines the realms of architecture, concept art, and cinema. And in this episode, we find out exactly what got Michael onto this path, whilst getting some valuable insights into his projects and philosophies in the creative realm, plus much more. Let's go. Okay, hey everyone, welcome to the Learn Squared podcast. And today's guest is the author Michael Yoshimura. How's it going, Michael? Hey, everyone. Hey, Aaron. Thanks for joining me. Um, apart from my little difficulties with our audio beforehand, um, hopefully this goes much smoother. Um, thank you for coming on. A uh, great fan of your work. If you'd just be kind enough to give everybody a quick intro of who you are. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm an artist from Toronto, Canada. Uh, my background is in architecture. I did my undergrad and master's in architecture. And I'm currently working as an as an in-house archviz artist at the moment, and uh, I'm doing concept art as my passion passion projects on the side, as well as doing some some freelance projects on the side as well. Awesome. Um, so, how did you get into? I mean, like, how did you get into architecture, and how come you're also doing concept art on the side? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it was kind of, uh, you know, coming out of high school or coming out of high school and, you know, thinking, okay, what should I study in university? Um, One of my best friends, his older sister actually studied architecture. um, And I've always been passionate about, you know, creating things with my hands, um, Mm -hmm. you know, like like as a kid, uh, you know, watching Star Wars, you know, making Lego. um, Those are things that I was always curious about. Um, so I was always, you know, curious about making things, um, building things, drawing things. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I really didn't know what I was passionate about, uh, in, in grade 12 and, and what to do in university. Um, so I really thought, okay, how can I maybe combine my passions and, and do something which is artistic, but yet technical at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, yeah, like I, I talked with my best friend and also like my best friend's sister um, about the program uh, and went to some, you know, how universities sometimes have like promotional events where they kind of explain their program. Uh, yes. I went to, 
yeah, I, I went to a couple of those and, you know, just to learn more about what architecture is about. Um, and, and it really, I guess, hit home with me. And I guess that's kind of what, what convinced me to, to go down that route and apply to architecture. Um, and it got in. Nice. Uh, and then, yeah, that was kind of like the, the initial journey um, as far as completing my undergrad, doing four years. Mm -hmm. uh in school uh and i was also lucky enough to be given the opportunity to go on exchange in madrid cool. um in in yeah in third year um that was a really amazing learning experience for me as far as like learning about like art and design mm -hmm. and just the uh, and just the crazy possibilities of kind of what architecture and design and art can be Mm -hmm. Um, so that was, I, I feel like that was like very much a, a turning point as far as like how I thought about design. Awesome. Was that like your th in your third year or what, what year was the placement? In? Yeah. So that exchange was halfway through third year. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, so in, in Canada, it's only your school year is only two, two semesters, but in, in Spain it's tri-semesters. So yes, I was there yes. for, for. Yeah, I was there for six months, so two tri-semesters. Um, and that was uh, after my first semester in third year Canada. Mm -hmm. And what was it like over there? What was so different and profound about that experience versus um, just, just studying back in Canada? Yeah, so um, I, have you ever been to Canada? Uh, I, no, I no, I haven't. No, no, no. Right, right. So, I mean... On, Canada is a, a great, like an, an amazing country, but as far as like art design and kind of those uh, creative cultural things, mm -hmm. we don't have the richest history. Um, so, it. you know, studying, like studying um, architecture in Canada, you know, all the, all the projects that you're looking at, you know, the amazing projects that are obviously in Europe and Asia, like right. there's okay. hardly any, any in, in North America, not to say that there aren't, but um you know where like where they are and where they're located you know like you know they're in the states it's not the easiest to travel to unlike mm -hmm. europe right like europe you know you just take like a like a ryanair flight you know 50, yeah. <laughs> 50 pounds and and you're in like madrid or like paris or like you know whatever moscow and it's like so accessible yes um, that's to true see, yeah. to, right like to see that amazing architecture um so yeah so going to madrid like obviously madrid is like an amazing kind of art and cultural hub throughout europe right like there's mm -hmm. like amazing um museums there and i like yeah just like being able to study there and most importantly like to to live there right just to experience that type of uh like architecture and urbanism mm -hmm. and just to be able to easily travel around right and to see you know all the all the amazing works of architecture that you know you only read about in textbooks but to mm -hmm. be there and to experience it um it was like really amazing right because i find in like art where you know it's mostly image based or even movies right um you know th those things are way more accessible to um to kind of take in and understand because it's you, you know it's online or like yeah. you can buy a book and and you can look at it but i find like um is really difficult to communicate the medium of architecture because it's space, right? It's spatial, it's, mm. it's physical. You can't, by looking at an image of a building, you can't um, understand how it feels like to actually be there, right? Mm. So that that's one thing um, I would say, you know, if there's any architects listening, like it's really important to like travel and to really experience space, right? So mm. like that, that's why, that's why, yeah, being in Madrid and just like, um going to those like amazing works of architecture was like really really amazing right um to because it's, it's important for for you to like grow as an architect um to really experience those those spaces yeah and like have you actually not touch on space i think that's a great like point you made about experiencing just space and i guess and by mm -hmm. that like that's the environment wherever you're situated um for whatever purpose yeah. right um and like something about architecture that i admire from a distance um because it's something that i don't particularly as a subject matter um mm -hmm. like work with 
Um, but that's that's just purely from where I guess my skill sets are currently. However, that doesn't take away from the mm. fact that like admiring that medium, that realm, um, both in terms mm. of I say, as you mentioned, like in a visual aspect, just by looking at creations that people make, designs and concepts, versus when you actually like you mentioned, enter a space and then mm. you know, like whether it's a building that's old or brand new or has a specific yeah. purpose, like you can kind of sense what it actually means, what it's meant to be. Exactly. Um, or even your exactly. own interpretations of a space. Um, yeah. That is something that you can't um, really capture unless you're actually there, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, absolutely. And um, do you travel much in general? Like, how is that? And um, what, what I want to get to with that is um, that how is traveling and just like, say, as a tourist versus being there for like a semester um and almost like studying and staying in a place uh, was there was there much difference to that and um and if so like in what way mm. i mm, i guess i guess to answer your question i mean i feel like when when you're when you're on exchange um it's like every, everything feels new right mm -hmm. so even when you're at school, like everything kind of feels like a new kind of exciting, like quote unquote tourist experience. Hmm. Right. Um, if, if that's any way to describe it. So I'd say, I'd say like living there and just kind of, uh, yeah, kind of like adapting to that Madrid culture, um, hmm. was, was really amazing. And, um, again, like Europe is so different than North America as far as, you know, just how, how, uh, tight and compact everything is mm -hmm. um right like i mean pr like prior to my exchange experience um i i have family in budapest so i i have traveled to europe mm -hmm. as well as like uh traveling to to london but like before this um before this experience so i like i i i have been to europe but obviously like living there is mm -hmm. you know like a totally different thing just kind of getting it into the groove of you know like the yeah, like that, like the everyday yeah. kind of experience, right? Um, it's it's totally different, and yeah, it's. I think it, um, you know, it really helps you grow as a person, um, to experience that, right? Because you know, you you have to you have to be, what's the word I'm looking for? You have to be, you know, somewhat. You have to be very open, uh, and really like almost not take anything for granted, right? Like mm -hmm. you know, you're 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 a foreigner in a country right to be you know respectful and and to try and like you know learn the cultures and and the customs of that of that yeah. country right so like it really helps you grow as a person um which is i think you know m most important but it's, it's like the most important thing right like a, above being you know like a good architect or, or a good artist yeah i mean like say would you say for and it, like how did that affect and did it affect in a big way like the way you mm -hmm. design and create in general yeah yeah so i guess like i was saying before like in in canada um kind of how how they teach you in undergrad how, how they teach you the medium of architecture in undergrad um i guess it's similar to an art school where it's very much project-based learning um mm -hmm. so in that sense uh like I, I mean, it's really enjoyable because you know there's there's no tests or like you know multiple choice. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all like okay, like we give you a, a conceptual brief, you know, just just like any artistic project. We give you a conceptual brief. Um, here are like the metrics. Here are the things that um this building must achieve, and then you know the rest is up to you to design to design the building and then to really um you know create an amazing space right mm -hmm. and then and then present it right so um that that's basically um undergrad architecture as well as uh masters of architecture right um mm -hmm. both both are project-based learning so when i was in undergrad before yeah before exchange um you know you're often given uh case studies to to look at and analyze and they're usually north american projects as well as um the site that you're given to create your design on mm -hmm. they're often they're often locally based um sites so you can actually visit it right mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, again, kind of like what we were talking about before, as in like, you know, it's it's really important to actually visit the place, right? And to visit the mm-hmm. space and to see what it feels like, right? So, you know, they were kind of, or they're often very hesitant to give you like a, let's say like a site in Tokyo, even though that'd be like super cool. Mm-hmm. It's obviously, you know, not realistic for a class of 15 people to go to Tokyo. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, so yeah, like you're, you're very much, you're very much kind of stuck in, stuck in this idea of, or you're very much stuck in only seeing, you know, North American architectural projects, North Mm -hmm. American, um, or the way that architects in North America execute space, right. Mm -hmm. Or execute design, which is completely different than how, you know, architects in Europe or Asia or elsewhere execute space, right? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So being able to yeah go to Europe and then to see how they design, which is again like they design completely differently um, than people in Canada and North America. To be able mm-hmm. to see that and then you know to to look at you know what they what what they did in in their projects and then you know, to see, to then like almost to, to do like a compare analysis, you're like, I I kept thinking to myself, like, damn, these projects are like so much more amazing as far as what they achieve, Mm. right? Like spatially, um, like from a functional point of view, from an Mm. artistic point of view, right? Um, So I was like, really, like, obviously, like very attracted to that, right? Because, you know, it's, it's like, as an artist, right? Like you see, you see like, you know, certain works of art right but then you see this other artist let's say that's like I, you've never seen before and you're like holy crap this is like insane right it's yeah. like where, where 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 have i been my whole life right it's, <laughs> it's kind of like it, it's kind of like that crazy eye opening experience and then you're like okay that's where i need to go um as far as like that direction and like to reach that level right so it, it was very much that uh way, way of thinking cool i mean that's like I- I think when it comes to like being a creative and that feeling when you just discover something, at least maybe not new overall, but new to yourself and you, it just changes. It's like, I guess, discovering a new color. Like this, you never yeah. imagined it before. And then when you see, you know, it's new and it's like it changes <laughs> yeah. everything and it adds to your palette. And then you just start thinking of, Ooh, if I dabble in that, that kind of thing, or even just admire it in a way, like, yeah, it's, that is one of the, I guess, the rewarding things about, just admiring, I guess, the act of like creating and um, art and design and everything overall, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I I also like um, your point of view regarding <clears throat> like how different regions and um, mm-hmm. like like design in terms of like building and the way they I guess approach it. Which which if you think of it, that's something I guess. As someone who's not in the field, take for granted that you just assume mm-hmm. it's just something that's like mm-hmm. a process and they do it and et cetera, et cetera. But it's, it's logical. Like it makes sense that you'd have different mindsets yeah. from different areas. I mean, it's like with anything. It's like the reason why cultures are distinct from one another is because of the way they do things from A to B, right? And um, they don't mm-hmm. necessarily use the same techniques or processes or maybe yeah. it's like other things that decide it. And I think... Yeah, you know, it kind of reminds me a bit like, say, music and how different cultures mm. operate on different scales. Like they don't necessarily use the same mm-hmm. scales that like maybe in the West it would be used versus the East. And I guess like even food as well, cooking techniques. Yeah. And, I mean, every culture yeah. has a type of bread, yeah. right? But there's, there's such a diverse way. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, like the diversity of bread is amazing, um, but they all come from like one yeah. like, plant and whatever. Um, so... Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, say, imagine, and it's quite a hypothetical one. Imagine if you never had that experience. Mm-hmm. How do you think it would have affected mm-hmm. you, and would it affected you? Like, do you think you'd still be on the path that you run now, um, or would it probably have changed in a significant way? Yeah, I would like to think that even if I had not gone on that on that exchange to uh, to Spain, uh, I'd like to think that. I'd still be on the path that I am now just because I feel like I'm, I'm in general, like a pretty curious person. Right. Mm. So, you know, I, I like to, I like to dive into, you know, things that I'm passionate about or that I'm interested in, not necessarily because, 
you know, someone told me to, to, you know, go look look in that area. Yeah. So I'd like to think that, you know, the way that I I thought about design and art, um, what would have naturally led me to kind of what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'd say like, that was, uh, that was like an amazing catalyst, right. To kind of like Mm -hmm. really propel me, um, to, to give me like a head start as far as like thinking about the, you know, like, and, and open up just new possibilities right about you know what what you can do as a creative yeah i mean like i think that's a great way to look at it as well is that a creative like curiosity and desire just to even create and uh, curiosity is a key word there it's a case of like you could have yeah. easily gone over somewhere and if you had not had that curiosity those things you were paying attention to you would not have therefore those conclusions you made or um, the dots you connected you would have gone over your head um so perhaps yeah. it, like, the biggest thing is maybe although while whilst it is awesome to like explore different places and methods and philosophies and what have you if you don't have that uh, i guess those that radar on to be like i'm gonna try and absorb as much as i can in this new space and take those mental notes even those like literal notes um you know, like th- yeah. there's a there's a lot that we can perhaps miss, and I guess it goes back to the beginning of yeah. your journey a little bit because, um, yeah, and it's quite interesting because I think it's like with a lot of creatives is you knew you like making things. Um, some of the best, like mm-hmm. some of the best things ever. You just mentioned is Star Wars and Lego. Like, what what a combination. Um, yeah, and <laughs> it's like it triggers a so so many ideas and i guess it's probably kickstarted so many careers um but yeah, maybe like it's quite I, absolutely yeah it maybe it's quite interesting the fact that even with those those things of like that desire to create um that energy to want to learn more and develop further and like because there's i'm sure you'd agree there's like there's an element of creating when you're just creating say for enjoyment for fun um but there's that mm. element of like yep. creating for a profession and there's that bit in between, which is about development and learning and wanting to improve so you can um, progress further in either of those aspects I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, yeah. Yet, at the same time, with a lot of creatives, um, at least in the early stages, and maybe this is more to do with the structures of the world and finding a job and mm-hmm. finding a profession and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff, um, it's not, there's no like obvious option initially. Um, which path to take like obviously you took the architecture t- texture route when i was at uni i did the transport yeah. design route but i remember like we just mentioned yep. there like a, i remember that place i can almost imagine what it was like in your shoes when you're thinking how do i apply yeah. this that i have to something yeah. that is you know like translating into quote-unquote a, a career um yeah after your placement um was that for like three months the placement that term mm-hmm. um after that yeah. where did your journey go after that it was for yep yeah so i guess to i, I guess there, there's a there's a couple of questions to unpack there so mm-hmm. yeah so that was um so yeah that was third year uh that was six months and then uh after that six months um I came back and I actually took, um, I'm, I'm sure in the UK, it's the same. You can take like a co-op placement, which is like a, like a work term, right? Like mm. a paid work term. Um, so, so I did that. Uh, I did a, a, a 12 month, uh, work term at an office in Toronto. Um, cause I, I really wanted to, I, I really wanted to work in the industry, uh, kind of before I graduated, uh, just because again, like I was really curious about so, you know, like after three years of school, um, you know, by, by the third year, you know, you're somewhat senior as far as, you know, uh, you're, you're fairly experienced. You've kind of refined, refined your craft a bit. Right. Um, so I was kind of like eager to like apply my skills in, in, in the industry. Right. So I worked for a year, uh, for a design oriented firm, um, again, like, uh, some some people take the route of working for like a large you know large more cor- corporate firm um mm-hmm. you know not that there's anything wrong with that but mm. i would say as far as like the architectural industry one of the 
potential downsides of working in like a, a really big corporate office is that you're you're not really going to be exposed to like the like the wide array array of tasks that mm. you could potentially be doing right um i guess that's like like any studio right like mm-hmm. usually um if you're in a smaller studio you, you kind of have to be like a jack of all trades you have to do everything right mm-hmm. because there's no like h there's no hr person right it's like you're you're the hr person but you're also the designer you're also you know meeting with the clients you're doing everything mm-hmm. so i really wanted that like um you know that like broad range of experiences which is why i work for like a very small office mm-hmm. um and then after that year like that was an amazing like learning experience you know coming right coming back right from uh, spain and then i i still had that last year to complete um mm-hmm. in 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 undergrad um and then you know that that was like that was it was like a very like straightforward year um i felt more confident in my design skills having having taken that year off right mm-hmm. to again kind of like kind of uh sharpen my tools right Mm. um and then to come back into school i felt like you know a lot more efficient a lot more confident in my skills um Mm. and then yeah afterwards um or or i guess during that fourth year um i was trying to do i was really interested in doing more experimental projects as far as you know buildings that don't necessarily look like buildings so Mm. you know architects i'm sure you know frank gary um you know a lot of people give Frank Gehry buildings a lot of stick because you know <laughs> the the classic like the the Simpsons crushed paper bag yes, right yes, yes. um as a metaphor right like i mean that like it's it's funny but at the same time um you know i i, I think if you like if people haven't been to Frank Gehry building if they actually go and experience it i think that'll really change their mind um even though you know there's like again he he gets a lot of stick as far as you know his his crushed paper uh, concepts yeah. but like the the buildings like are like so amazing um and yeah like i was looking at those types of architects who are doing a lot more experimental stuff right wow um and and what what was difficult to communicate when you're doing those types of projects is you know doing conventional 2d drawings right so like a plan section and elevation mm-hmm. they don't they don't really communicate the space right Mm. um they like i mean they are the building like you're drawing that crazy you know frank gary shaped building but Mm -hmm. it doesn't really show off the space as to like how amazing it is right Mm. so you know naturally as as i was doing these more crazy projects um i was like okay i i need to communicate these types of designs um in a more effective way and that that's what led me to really diving into the world of of 3D, um, you know, rendering and like mm. archives, right? Like that, like that kind of curiosity in design thinking is, you know, what pushed me to really develop my like like 3D rendering skills. Mm. Um, so that so that's where like that that um, curiosity and and passion came from. And yeah, I, I became like super interested in it, um, and I really enjoyed that that side because it's like really like very artistic right um yeah, it's basically yeah. it's, it's it's basically like concept art right yes. um you know you you have a quick sketch or you, you have you know your rough block out an idea but now it's like okay let's push this let's make this image tell a story as to you know the problem that is trying to solve mm-hmm. um so that's that's what really kind of got me onto this path as far as um yeah like doing archviz as a mm-hmm. career and doing uh, concept art as a career sweet i mean that's like again it's great to see where the where curiosity led you and it's um i was actually quite interesting to hear the fact that like was the 3d aspect not part of the curriculum when you was uh, um when you studying that at university or was it almost like yeah, touched yeah. upon they like they briefly touched on it um Mm. again like i feel like maybe i'm generalizing but i would say in my opinion most architectural schools i I think now in the past two three years is really beginning to change but Mm. in my opinion you know like five six years ago when i was in school Mm -hmm. they weren't really especially 
uh, at schools in North America. They weren't really pushing the digital uh, visualization uh, techniques uh, mm. almost at all, right? They briefly touched on it, but they didn't. They didn't really make it a priority for mm. you as a student to to be curious about that, right? Like they they almost didn't enable you uh, and give you any tools to really push that, right? Mm -hmm. So it was always one of those things where that was kind of like the last thing on your on your deliverables to to do, right? Is like right. the 3D rendering that was yes. like the last thing, right? But um. So yeah, they didn't really push it, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like it basically, I just I basically taught myself. And I think, I mean, how did how have you found that journey so far? Teaching yourself, I guess, like the digital art side of things. Yeah, I I guess, I guess to like add to what I was saying before, like while they don't push the the rendering and yeah like the the visualization side of it yeah. i mean you know they they do push the like the the digital production workflow because you know you're obviously not going to be doing your drawings with like a, a pen and paper right mm -hmm. so you're still using cad based programs right so um for example like i'm sure everyone knows sketchup 3d um mm -hmm. you know they they teach you sketchup 3d autocad and then all, also uh rhino 3d which is like yeah. probably like the most um like the most uh like abundantly used which is you know yeah again again cad based you, you yeah. can do like uh 2d 2d line drawings like 3d rendering and like 3d modeling in that right mm -hmm. um so like i i mean i had those i had those like 3d fundamentals right mm -hmm. as far as you know knowing how to use a software so i guess it was good that i wasn't coming in cold right, because right, right. i think that that like the like the learning curve wasn't as nearly as difficult as if I had never touched like a a, a 3D rendering software or yes. a 3D modeling software. Yeah. Um, and would you say that the fact that you didn't jump in with the 3D whilst learning, like, let's say you had, would you say perhaps some of the fundamentals might have got diluted a, a little bit perhaps? Because I guess they're focusing more on like theory and how to get your concept out yeah. without relying on, I guess, like say the speed of digital art. Um, like, do you think that is to yeah. your advantage perhaps? Because I guess that the disadvantage was the fact that if you had had, had that initially, uh, one thing I'm sure you'd agree with the 3D side of things is that conceptualizing, it's super quick, right? You can get iterations and conceptualize things that yeah. look it's very quick. Yeah. Great. It's super quick, right? Um, but then on the or, other side, yeah, um, perhaps yeah, yeah, you'd yeah. lose a bit of like say the design thinking of it because sometimes serendipity of like 3D you can just say oh that, that's kind of figured it out for me um, you know you kind of like overlook that mm. perhaps so um, I, w I wonder if yeah. like if that's yeah. something that was maybe perhaps to your advantage yeah I, I mean honestly like what, what you just described there is basically exactly what the what the teachers and I guess academia like tried to instill in all the mm. students i'm sure like when you were going through your your schooling right like learning mm. about transport transportation design mechanical design all those things right um i'm sure they they're really clear as far as like like understand how it works don't just yes. copy it right um yes. so so it was very much it was very much that that way of thinking right whereas like you know yeah it's like it's so easy to create a design that looks cool um but you know, does it does it solve the design problem, yes. right? Does it like that? Does it tell the story? Does it, yeah, like does it solve the problem, right? Mm. Um, so again, that's like just like uh, well, just like any art school or like like your schooling, right? Mm -hmm. um, my schooling was exactly the same as mm. like they in in a way I felt like they were hesitant to kind of um really push those things because mm -hmm. um yeah it it doesn't necessarily or it probably doesn't make you a better designer right mm. to to be good at those tools um it's 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 a lot more important to be like a better designer mm. i think like what you also tend to find as well and i guess tom will only tell right because we, we guess we never know for sure um but like say yeah. someone like ourselves who did come from that um is more theory and although it was like say because uh, the early days of like say 3D or the adoption of 3D as like say a tool set 
um, in terms of like executing yeah. designs and solving problems. Um, as as time has progressed and the tools have gotten more accessible, um, like we, I guess, are more heading towards that direction where it's like, oh, these tools are great. I'm going to completely absorb this as much as possible and apply it to whatever I've learned before. Whereas perhaps people who may be yeah. perhaps starting out now um, or did jump into the digital side of things initially are coming from another direction and heading towards, I guess, where we began, where it is a case of they understand the tools, they understand how to um, get the most out of those tools. But then, you know, you always gravitate yeah. towards what's missing and it might be the, the um, you know, the fundamentals, the theory and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's quite interesting. Like yeah. it's, yeah. It, it is like, we look at it maybe as a linear thing when perhaps it's a bit more, I guess, three-dimensional and rounded. And you always tend to gravitate to what you, I guess, had lack of or not any exposure to, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess like it's that curiosity where if, if you're a curious person, right? Like, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you want to improve, improve your craft, right? Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like what you're saying, right? It's like, okay, what do I have in my toolbox right now? And like, what am I lacking, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, like, how can I level up, right? As, as well as like, what direction do I want to gain more skills in, right? Yeah. And where are you at now taking on that, that, that note? Like, where... Where do you where do you see yourself at the moment in terms of your skill set and I guess your strengths? Um, perhaps some of the areas that you would like to brush up on. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, that's a, that's a difficult question. I feel like right now, um, I feel like right now I'm, I've got like solid, uh, like so, I I like to think I've got solid design skills right mm -hmm. from my from my undergrad and masters of architecture, right? Um, you know, I, I'm really thankful for that training because again, like uh they like during school, right? Like they really teach you to slow down and to really, really think about your your design decision making, mm -hmm. right? Which I think is like an an invaluable skill, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd like to think that like my design skills, you know, I, I'm lucky to have like a strong design fundamental training. Mm -hmm. Um so I feel like I've I've got like solid skills there, but I mean I feel like my my storytelling as far as you know like how how you block an image you know composition and lighting mm -hmm. all those things I'm I'm constantly trying to improve. So like I I mean like right now I'm I'm really kind of just focusing on those things like composition and storytelling and mm -hmm. lighting. Um, not not so much trying to focus on the technical side, but really just to to you know work on on passion projects that you know level up my skills um mm. in those things like r rather than just r rather than just trying to get better at the technical stuff at the moment right and is there like a end goal for this or is this just a case of like i guess we mentioned earlier this is like perhaps an area which is something that you decided to gravitate towards and this required i guess a bit more training and developing um, a skill set um, or is this part of like say a a longer strategy to um, create I guess something else or add something to how you're creating at the moment yeah I, I guess I it's a difficult question for me to answer because I feel like right now I'm kind of I'm kind of torn between two things like I, I really I, I really do enjoy doing like arch arch viz mm -hmm. which is what I'm doing now um, you know I I do like working with architects and, you know, helping, helping them fulfill their vision, right. Of like, like how their building can look through an image, right. Mm -hmm. How they can better tell their story through an image. Um, so I really do enjoy that aspect. Um, you know, it's, it's also what I'm comfortable in, right. So naturally, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking like, okay, like I'm, I'm good at this, let's continue on this road. Right. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, then there's that other aspect of me, which is like basically what I'm I'm exploring in my my personal concept art work, mm -hmm. right? Is like you know, yeah, that more you know uh, work that could easily or work work that you know I could use in my portfolio to mm -hmm. potentially work in the you know the video game industry or like the film industry, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, part of me also wants to to give myself that chance to to work in that area, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of torn right now 
as far as I guess what direction I should go. Mm. Um, but at least that the, you got like I guess two things um, that you're pursuing towards, and you know, um, it looks like it will just happen naturally, um, whichever way it progresses. Um, oh, but yeah, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> but in terms of like, is that like what's that like in terms of like is that something that you just kind of like just letting it happen you just kind of perhaps um a bit laid back in terms of let's just see where it goes or is that something that is you know like something you may be perhaps eager to change um because i'm just thinking about like my own experiences a few years back and i remember like having a fair bit of you know like anxiety and just more like i say yeah. desperation just to like to head in a certain direction in terms of my art whereas the last few years it's more been a case of you know keep developing and the opportunities mm. that will come they'll just come as long as you keep developing right um like where are you with yeah. that yeah i i guess it's more the latter in the sense that i'll cool. i'll keep doing what i'm doing now and and trying to yeah like like just trying to improve myself as an artist um again like constantly trying to improve my craft um mm. and and if if any opportunities you know come up through that then i'll i'll happily take those Sweet. um so yeah more more in that boat and so in that case in terms of wanting to get into like say games and films basically entertainment design the, yeah. the area right um yeah uh, do you freelance at the moment yeah yeah i i do um actually I, I recently just had a, an opportunity. Um, I'm sure you know Jama Jurabev. Um, he cool. he hosts a five week mentorship course, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I I recently took that just because I thought, okay, you know, again, let's um, you know, I'm here. Here's where I'm at, and then here's mm -hmm. here's where I want to go, right? And obviously, you know, Jama is like a he's he's an awesome mentor. For sure. um yeah. and uh, awesome teacher so that was like an amazing like it was like an amazing like five week concept art uh boot camp right Sick. so yeah. i took that um that was like an amazing an amazing learning experience I, mm -hmm. I learned a huge amount um from that um and then actually just recently um you know his big medium small um his big medium small company um yeah. which is which creates you know those those 3d um assets uh yes, he recently yes. reached out to me as far as to collaborate on an upcoming pack Sweet. so Sick. so i've so i've got my hands busy with that um nice. as well as yeah doing um yeah yeah doing uh archviz projects like freelance archviz projects from nice. from various studios so um, yeah that that's kind of where i'm at I'm, that's kind of where i'm at right now dude that sounds like a great opportunity and like looking at your work and from what I know of your work, um, doing that with the big, medium, small team seems like a great fit mm -hmm. from my perspective. So I know that's going to be awesome, but it's super exciting to see how Thank that you. turns out. Um, so like concept art, when did that start becoming a, I guess, mm -hmm. a thing where you wanted to pursue it more? Was it always kind of there like, you know, hanging in the background saying, hey, come on, let's get started? Or was it something that just... I guess happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when when so when I was doing my my master's thesis, so it's like a it's like a two year program. The first year you're basically doing like advanced um, advanced project based uh, courses once again, mm -hmm. and then your your second and last year of your master's is a uh, is a thesis. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's the full eight eight months you're working on you know your own thesis project, um, and when like when it was coming up to my thesis uh my final thesis year right so like the end of my first year of masters i was really thinking okay like what what do i want to do my thesis on right it's eight months right you're, you're mm -hmm. going to be working on your own right um and and it's going to be and it's going to be you know like a very like a very long uh exciting but you know like a lot of graft put into that year right mm -hmm. so i was thinking okay like what like what what am I passionate about and what should I do my thesis on? Um, and then I was really thinking, okay, I'm passionate about film. I'm, I'm passionate about architecture and like, I'm passionate about uh, visualization, right. And mm -hmm. like 3d rendering. So I thought, okay, how can I, how can I combine kind of like 
my my three loves um and and make a project out of it right mm. um and then that's when i was like okay you know what let's really dive into this world of cinematography mm. and you know like filmmaking and animation and let's let's do for my final project like a like a short animated film um which which I ended up doing so that was kind of like i kind of like threw myself like directly like i dived right into that world right as mm -hmm. far as you know like that whole production pipeline of basically making making your own personal short film right so mm -hmm. you know while, while while i was doing that i was obviously looking only at basically concept art right mm -hmm. um and kind of like what they do or like you know production pipelines in the you know in the entertainment industry right mm -hmm. so i was you know by by that point by by that point in time i wasn't really looking at architecture i still was right for some references right mm -hmm. but as far as like the like how how to how to execute the project it was purely from a, a concept art point of view so that was like that was like my first taste of it uh and then ever since then i i i loved it right so i, I never really looked back wow so your first jump into the concept art world was by making a basically a film right yeah Wow. So, you know, yeah. that's quite interesting because normally, um, well, not normally, but a lot of people like tend to do their, you know, still images and they progress and you went yeah. straight into the deep end. Um, I mean, how yeah. was that? Was that something that was like intimidating or, you know, because the fact that you went for it showed that maybe perhaps it was something that you just felt was, you know, the, the right way to start maybe. Yeah, honestly, it was like, like halfway through that year, I, I was thinking like, oh my gosh, what, <laughs> what, what, what have I signed myself up for, right? <laughs> like, it was like, man, I, I, I really, I really went off the deep end this time. But um, it, it was really much like, um, again, like, you know, you have eight months to work on a single project, right? Yeah. Like how many, like, uh, like, and eight months, like basically full time on mm -hmm. a personal project, right? Because that, that's basically what a thesis is just like, a very long um you know very in-depth personal project right mm. um where you're combining you know the actual project with the with the theoretical side right mm. so i'm like okay when am i gonna have this type of opportunity to do something like this in yes. my life probably never right that's true yes so right so i was really like okay you know you know let's let's put this in perspective um and let's really challenge yourself right nice. um because again, I was like, you know, I was doing like more like I, by first year masters, I was doing like very conceptual uh, architecture projects, right? Yeah. Which were more like, yeah, more, more like almost like kit bash 3D sets rather than <laughs> like, uh, like, like, oh, here's my building, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I was like, okay, you know what? Let's continue on this path and then let's, let's push it to the max as far as tackling something super ambitious, um, which will, which will like really, which will really push my skills to the max, right? As far as like mm. learning curve, right? Um, so I, I really just thought a uh, thought of it as like a uh, a really big challenge, and you know, at the end of those eight months, I was like, if I can pull this off, it'll be an amazing learning experience to get to where I want to go, almost like at an at a, at a accelerated timeline. Wow. What um have you got that film up on your website? I do, yeah. It's, Which one is it? Yeah, it's it's uh it's titled Choten Guy. Um, oh, cool. Yes, yes. I'm very familiar. So, with that yeah. So actually, that Stephen Corman um digital map painting course that yeah. was I I took his course um to kind of grapple with how just like his whole workflow as far as setting up shots and and thinking through kind of like yeah that shot creation process, which is yeah, which is why why I took his course, which was yeah super awesome. Yeah, so, as yeah. we mentioned um when we just started the call off like that was yeah my first introduction to your work and i remember the shot yeah. and i was like wow um i think it was one of the few that had come out uh, that work that had been uploaded after the course had come out and oh yeah like it's it's cool because like with that course like with many others you it's cool to see that although like Stephen's particular um, project in that course, um, mm. how he teaches it, 
everyone's going their different directions. Um, obviously, yours mm-hmm. had a purpose because it was for a project. Um, yeah. So it's always cool to see everyone go in their different directions, um, but still apply. Um, but yeah, like that was, I love that piece. Um, and it's Thank congratulations you. on it because the fact that that was like your first. Did you have any like I guess experiments or little dabbles, or did you just this is, is literally the first thing you you done in terms of a film? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, before before this project, before before I made Shoten Guy, I mean, I was just doing purely like two D re- renderings, right? I right, wasn't right, doing right, right. any any animations at all right so like yes. obviously you know still like li- li- lighting setting up the scene texturing etc but as far as like animating uh and like putting together like a pre trying to focus on story all those things were like 100 uh completely new sick but as I, that makes it even better like a lot of the things that i tend to like is obviously firstly when you first see it in terms of the, the finished version um yeah. but then when you get to get an insight behind the process and then those little stories like you just mentioned um they just yeah. add extra value to it so yeah super congrats yeah. on that um thank you i think it's awesome and like how was that overall like so eight months is mm-hmm. quite impressive um to get all that done like what was that process like did it kind of go smoothly was there a lot of hiccups was there a point where you obviously you mentioned earlier that you're thinking like what have you got yourself into um but yeah. were there like were there moments where things weren't clicking or was it just a case of powering through it yeah oh man all, all of the above like, <laughs> okay um, it, it was yeah it was a it was a crazy journey for sure uh i guess you know being like being a creative um you know one of the deliverables for the project is you need a like a written um like thesis booklet right so mm-hmm. basically all the all the conceptual and theoretical stuff and the reasoning behind mm. what you did and why you did it, right? So, you know, I'd like to think that, like, I, I'm a good writer. I enjoy writing, but you know, nice. having to sit down and write, you know, I think my final thesis book was around probably like a uh, hundred and fifty to two hundred pages, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's a fair bit of writing. Like, obviously, within those 200 pages, you have images and like texts and call outs and stuff like that. Right. Mm. So it's not like purely text, um, but still, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot of writing to do. Um, so, I mean, that was a really good experience as far as to discipline myself, right. To really be like, okay, mm. you know, you really need to execute this to a high level and like it needs to be done. Right. So, I mean, that, like, that was one thing um, which was hard to do, right. Just to, j- just to get the writing done. Mm-hmm. and out of the way right because you know you're like oh i, I want to learn you know blender like how to like how to you know improve improve my craft like how mm-hmm. to learn animation right yeah. like how to learn all these things and that's constantly that was constantly in the back of my mind right so i mean there was that um you know there's things like just simple things like learning the software and like mm-hmm. how like having to um you know optimize your scenes or like for example, in Blender, kind of, you know, how how much you can, like, how much geometry you can push in your scene and how many, like, textures you can push in your scene before, like, your system crashes, right? Yeah, like, yeah. all those things, right? Um, all those technical things, right? So, yeah, it was, like, a, a lot of ups and downs, but but definitely learned a lot in that process. That's awesome. Um, For anybody who is watching this on YouTube, obviously, you'll be seeing mike's work on the screen um as we speak if anyone's listening to it for our other platforms definitely hit the links in our description and just check out uh, mike's portfolio um because you'll see all of that work on there um in particular this project because you've put the whole breakdown and everything on the website itself and yeah man this is this looks like a, a really thorough fun at least from a view i know you mentioned that it had a lot of ups and downs um yeah but yeah man like you can see the hard work you can see all of the effort put into it and even the vision behind it and yeah man it looks like super awesome thank you thank you so what what was like so when that came out um i'm I'm sure your lecturers and everybody loved it they would have been like wow this is amazing um (laughs) i can also see on the vimeo you've got uh, it got picked up for a lot of festivals and uh, awards and stuff like that as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Um, so like, what was, what happened after this? Where did the journey head towards after this? Yeah. So, I mean, after, after those eight months, you're, you're, you're definitely exhausted. Right. So, you know, you're, you're kind of in a daze as far as like, damn, it's, it's over, it's done. Right. Um, you know, kind of like patting yourself on the back. Right. Um, it, it was, it was also, it, it, it kind of sucked because this was, um, right when the pandemic was hitting, I guess a year and a half ago. Right. So that like all the presentations, um, of my cohorts and classmates, um, everything was online on zoom. So no one could kind of, uh, congratulate each other, which kind of sucked. So, so, I mean, there was, there was that to deal with, um, but yeah, like after this was done, one of my um, one of my professors that I worked very close closely with uh, throughout this thesis year, she um, she specialized in film and architecture. Like she was doing her PhD on on that topic, right? Um, and she was like, "Hey, you should um, you should look to enter this in some film festivals, right? Uh, related to architecture and design and, and film, right?" And I'm like. Okay, I honestly never even thought about that. So yeah, I went on, I discovered Film Freeway, which is like, um, I guess, pretty well known for submitting your your films to basically any festival throughout the world. Um, and yeah, there was a couple of, um, there's a couple of film festivals, like for example, the one in Rotterdam is very specific to films that are specific to film and architecture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, I just, uh, hey, why not? Right. Um, I'll enter. Uh, I'll just see what what comes about of it. Um, and then, yeah, I was uh, I was lucky enough to be selected for a few. Um, some of them, they actually saw it on Vimeo, and they reached out to me. Um, wow. So yeah, it was like a really humbling experience. Um, something like I really, I really didn't expect. Right. I kind of just yeah. just put it out there and 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 see what happens. Um, and it was uh, it was a it was a good response. Now that's that's really awesome to hear and you know it, it came out really great um i mean i can imagine that it wasn't that great because like you mentioned you worked on it for so long so many ups and downs um so many times you're thinking okay this is a bit it's a bit yeah. too much yeah um but how do you feel at the end of it now yeah yeah i guess like you know, uh, but like by like by the last month when you're grinding to to like to get this thing done, right? You're like, oh, this is terrible. I hate it. Like, I just want it over with, right? So when it's actually over, you're just like, I don't want to look at this thing, right? Like for for like a year, right? So yeah, I was totally just thinking, you know, again, it was like a deliverable, right? Like my final project was the animation. So man, you 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 got to get this done, right? Um, so there's like that aspect to it. I wasn't thinking at all that i would even yes submit it um if if my professor if my if my professor didn't suggest that to me right like it, it wasn't it didn't even cross my mind <laughs> well for someone who would wanted to just get into concept art yeah. and then decided to make a film instead <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i think it came out great yeah i mean i guess for for my first ever animation i guess i'm, I'm pretty happy with it right um you know, I've watched that, I've watched that thing like hundreds of times, right? Like through their, mm -hmm. through the previs up until now. So, I mean, I guess, I guess it's one of those things where, yeah, I, I can look back and say like, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what I achieved at that time. Nice. Right. But that was definitely like, you know, that was me from a couple of years ago. Right. So, um, but at, at the same time, that, that being said, like it is, I think it, it is for any artist to like reflect um, mm -hmm. and to look back at their at their early works right like mm -hmm. to see how far you've come right because i think often you know as, you know as i'm sure any creative can relate um you know our heads are always down in the trenches thinking our work's not good enough we always want to improve right mm -hmm. um but you know I, I i think it's important to look back and see like damn like five years ago i was doing these like you know crappy stick drawings and then like <laughs> now you're like you know doing like photo real stuff right like just yeah. just as like to like proof of concept right so i think yeah lo looking back and seeing damn like i i made that having you know not known any animation software previous i can say that was yeah i'm, I'm pretty happy with it so shoten guy the way you have i guess designed it and yeah. made it 
I mean, it's definitely what you've mentioned before about yeah how you feel spaces and you know your sense of spaces, yeah. and um, you can definitely see that has you you know you've instilled that into this project um and it's cool to see basically you've built your own little world it's like it's it's not just cool imagery it's um yeah it's imagery that it exists in a place a place that mm-hmm. is permanent that makes sense um and obviously that's a world that you've built you put a lot of energy into it it's got its own character um so with that said I know this was your first film. Um, like, would you want to turn this into that? Like, basically, is it? It seems like there's more to tell in this world. There's a lot of things happening. Um, it looks like a lot of avenues you could explore this in. So, do you plan on expanding this? Is this part of a wider thing? Um, is there anything already in the works, or was this just you know a thing like you just made it? And you put your your heart and soul into it, and then you're just gonna move on to another project yeah i i've I thought about that before, maybe doing like a like a sequel to this um i guess I guess it is kind of like a like an i p for me personally, right um so you know it it is something that maybe down the line, yeah, I would like to do like a sequel to, but I guess for now, um you know doing these doing personal projects I, I i like to keep it fun and exciting so you know may like yeah may, maybe i think i think if the time's right if the moment's right i would i would more than love to dive back into this space um and and do a sequel but for now i think i'll just leave it as it's as like a standalone uh project <laughs> and speaking of diving into space or spaces rather um like like you mentioned obviously with the architecture journey yep. and like studying spaces and you know like just um appreciating how that can impact a viewer or an audience member or someone traveling through a particular place or whatever the purpose may be um you know like and then also we just mentioned about making films and you've made films too um and continuing to do so and then now you have like in film there's also like iconic films where they're iconic maybe also for the spaces that they have built um and you know like things like that like for example you got uh you know blade run is a great example um you know alien and there's like so many others where events happen in a particular building and the way it's captured and lit on film really adds to the story almost like you know like it imprints itself on your brain um at certain, certain events certain moments in, in film and in, in the story you know like that's also yeah that's also quite powerful as well um in the sense of like although you can't experience that in person like uh, capturing it on film and doing it in a, in, in a very clever way um like how that can really impact the viewer and like just improve the story overall um uh, i'd love to hear your take on that and your thoughts on you know like the power of spaces and architecture and like you know just just the overall like i guess being able to capture a certain vibe or be able to like deliver a certain like mood or anything um for the viewer on film Mm -hmm. i guess yeah that's a that's an interesting question because you know, like like we were talking about earlier, architecture you have to experience it physically. Whereas, um, you know, when when you're watching a film, um, the like the amazing or the unique thing about like the medium of film is it's the only medium that deals with space and time um, simultaneously, right? Like, you know, as as the viewer, uh, the director has your attention for you know whatever like half an hour or like an hour or two hours of your time right and like no other medium really does that right like when you're looking at an image you can just look at it one second later like it's gone right um but like for the medium of film um that's what's so amazing about it right like you have have the viewer's attention for that undevoted um amount of time right however long your your film is um 
And like what, what I enjoy the most about film is his ability to convey emotion, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I find like architecture also has that ability, right? Um, you know, when you're in some spaces, you feel like, oh, th- this space is depressing for one reason or another, right? Or you go into another space and you're like, this space feels cozy and warm and happy, right? Or this space feels exciting. Or like, for example, when, when you're walking mm-hmm. into a stadium, you feel like euphoric and like excited and, and joyful, right? Because you know you're going to see like a, like a football match, right? It's like spaces have that profound effect mm-hmm. on, on humans just as, you know, film um, yeah. can also have that effect uh, in the mm-hmm. sense that it's super effective at conveying emotion, right? So I guess, I guess, yeah, like, watching films like for example i recently just for the first time i finally saw uh tarkovsky's stalker um and like that like not familiar with that definitely i'd highly highly recommend it um and yeah and like what's what's amazing about that is like the whole film is this this like or all his all his films are like very you know psychologically challenging as far as you know the story and the visuals and the 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 text to go along with it they're not always on the same yeah. page right um they really challenge you right it's not like a to b right um it's not exactly linear right so mm-hmm. um yeah how he how he tells his story and then like also how he combines that with mm-hmm. the images as well as the architecture and the space and the environments it's like it's extremely like a like a full body like multiple sensorial kind of experience right which is when you think about it conceptually that's very similar to architecture right like sight sound you're experiencing space right so mm-hmm. yeah it's it's one of those things where yeah film has that ability to really do that yes. um and yeah like films also are just as powerful as far as conveying space such as Blade Runner, right? Like all those details that you see, right? Like Ridley Scott, um, you know, his his attention to detail in all the films that he that he's done, right? That's what makes them. That's what like really sets them apart, right? Like every detail is absolutely perfect for that world and that story that he's trying to convey. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Ridley Scott is is just one of the is just one of the baddest to ever do it. Um, now, like you, you've got like um, we were talking about obviously actual spaces. Um, we have discussed film. Um, like games is another one which is a bit, I guess, a little bit different purely because, obviously, like with with a film, you know, like it's not up to us where we can see where we can look. We, you know, the, it's dictated for us what aspects of a space or an environment or a room or whatever that we can see um and obviously like whereas in real life you can just walk anywhere you can touch you can you know all that kind of stuff um a game's i guess kind of similar because you can explore the environment um in some games you can pan around the environment and everything as well um but nevertheless you know you can still interact with it and it does impact maybe you could say your your gaming experience like in very different ways like you know you got your your open world games where you can just run around and kind of do as you please um then you've got like games like you know like the last of us um where you can uh, or uncharted as well where like you know these are great great games with a lot of spectacle um but the, you know like they're very narrative driven very linear so you kind of still direct it in certain ways you can't really explore everything but never but it's still done in a way where it feels like a world it's not so much as a film um if that makes sense um but you know like game games another realm where it's i guess it's like a bit of a blend of both in terms of film and real life um but you know like what have your experiences been in, been in terms of like appreciating games and and obviously the architectural and you know like all the fe- themes you're talking about earlier as well yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd I'd say those games that you just mentioned are like an amazing example of those. Um, it's like a super immersive world combined with with amazing storytelling, right? So, I mean, yeah, film. Yeah, film is interesting in the sense that yeah, it it's very um, it's very mm-hmm. critical in the sense that 
it tells a certain story from a certain point of view, right? Whereas you're absolutely right. Video games um, have that amazing ability to, like, you're, you're kind of making up your own story alongside the main narrative, right? Which is, I think, yeah, like something in more in more recent memory right like those games that you mentioned or even something like uh like death stranding right like those video games have really pushed the genre as far as what a video game can be right and just how immersive it can be right um like i'll like i'll, I'll admit i'm not i'm not a big uh video game player but like one of my good friends he's like a, a huge fan of hideo uh kojima and he was like super, super, super hyped for the release of Death Stranding. And then obviously when it came out, you know, he was like, he was like, man, this is crazy. Right. And we were, we were just talking about it. Um, and then so I was like, OK, you know what? I, I, I got to find more about this, uh, about this video game. And this, this guy posted like all the all the like storyline <laughs> outtakes, which is like, I think something like three hours in like full 4K on YouTube. And so I started watching that, right? And obviously, you know, Kojima got uh, uh, Guillermo del, del Toro, right, on that for, for a character, right? Who's obviously an amazing director, amazing creative person, right? And yeah, yeah, I was, I was just like, I was just watching this, right? Um, and I'm like, man, this is, this is just as good as like a movie, right? If not better, right? Like the storytelling yeah. was so, so like convincing as far as like the story with the world, with the characters and, you know, everything going on so that that really blew my mind um i totally agree with you on that and like i can relate to you as well in terms of like the gaming sense or not being like so much in touch um purely because i haven't owned a console for at least a generation um mm-hmm. but you know like, i love gaming though mm-hmm. but i had to put I had to put it to one side just to focus on art and everything um but you know like some of my best yeah. gaming experiences have come from you know people like like kojima for example and i remember like first playing his games metal gear solid and just being blown away by like like like, you know like okay this this is um like this is supposed to be a game that you know you just complete you achieve things and etc 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 um yet you know it's very cinematic it's like a movie almost and um and then there's these like, like the characters and lore and all that kind of business and it's just amazing and then you know i remember like metal gear solid 4 um that had like a ridiculous amount of hours of like cutscenes and stuff which I'm, I'm happy to watch i'm okay with that um alongside the game um i know some people like it's a game i should be playing rather than watching well i, I don't care if that's what the vision of the creator is then i'm all for it um but it's it was just fascinating and you know it's like it almost unlocked a different kind of experience of gaming because before it was just a case of like arcade and you know get top scores and beat somebody that you're playing whereas now it's almost like you know you can experience a film and even though you can't feel temperatures and whatnot you know you can kind of like like if you're in, you know shadow moses and stuff you can tell temperatures but anyway like back that like death stranding was another one it was like okay i'm not gonna own the game um but what one thing i do now is uh i just watch people play it um and even by watching someone play i was just fully immersed like i really love the fact that it was just this dude running around in fields and stuff yeah i know you got into like skirmishes and little battles and all that kind of stuff but uh, and the storyline was crazy but um you know it was uh just it was just like wow this is this is a great you know like experience almost i don't know it's like there's another game um shadow of colossus um i'm not sure if you're familiar with that one um but um that was like ps2 and you know it's it's something that like wasn't um there's not like baddies there's no like activities or things to do things to unlock it's just an open world and you just travel from place to place and it's like this very ancient ruinous place you find these huge giant colossal creatures and the fact that it's very expansive but very like a lonely type game it was just for me one of the best gaming experiences ever and like again connecting back to the points you made earlier about just spaces and mm, yeah you know like like feelings and all that kind of stuff it, it yeah, was yeah, just, yeah yeah it was just it was just stunning yeah like yeah like th- those games you know 
again, like what we were talking about earlier, right? Um, you know, it, it looks amazing. You know, the designs are amazing, but, you know, put, put all that stuff aside and, you know, the, the story is what really draws you in. Right. Um, and again, it, it really just, it, it really just boils down to good storytelling. Right. Um, and then all those other things, right. Which they executed so well, right. Like character design, vehicle design, um, and, and the environment design and all those other things, all those details, right. Like those things really fell in place, but it was really like the the foundation, which was the mo most important thing, was the the story, right? Um, so yeah, it it, ju it just goes to tell you, right? Like, um, you know, like how far something that is maybe like I, like I'd much rather watch like a, a a low budget movie with an amazing story than like a crazy expensive like Hollywood blockbuster with like insane budget, but the story is like you know A to B, right? Like um. Like I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Spike Lee, and I I think I think was it last year or a year and a half ago he he released a film called The Five Bloods, um and I, I think it's on Netflix um definitely yeah definitely watch that and you know you you can tell from the special effects in that movie that it definitely wasn't a, a high budget film, but uh, what the story is about is these five um. Vietnam War vets and they're going back to Vietnam to kind of uh relive their their uh their Vietnam War days um together as as friends right like they like they were in the same squad right so they're all like very tight knit they've been through hell and back together right um and then they, they go back to Vietnam to kind of re relive their past um and yeah just like the the depth of the characters um and you know all the nuances all the interactions that they have together um amazing acting right um but like that was just like the most amazing story um an amazing film even though yeah like some of the special effects were pretty bad mm. no offense spike lee right mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah again just, just goes to show you right like the uh yeah the story like was what, what it was an amazing immersive story and it, it conveyed so much emotion right like you really felt like um you understood where they were coming from and the way the way it was conveyed right and like the whole pacing and story and everything was just amazing yeah no, i totally concur with that and especially like my take on film in general and just maybe just the overall entertainment medium is like back in the day just grown up on um yeah just grown up on like um hollywood yeah. films like your blockbuster yeah, same, films same here you know, like yeah. Just all the all the major hits basically and um i still have a soft spot for those maybe because that's what i grew up on and you kind of want that feeling again maybe um but yeah like just like yourself I tend to find now yeah i'm attracted yeah. more towards films like that go that do not fall under that formula of what a typical blockbuster would um it is very character driven you know like well written well shot all that kind of stuff like yeah. that's the kind of stuff i really hunt for and really appreciate more than anything else um mm -hmm. and i'd happily overlook if it mm -hmm. has you know like a low budget and where you can see maybe like maybe on the special effects side it wasn't done very to a high level um that perhaps you know a few extra bucks could have given um and maybe that just says a lot about where i am as a consumer and as a fan um but it also shows that you know like you don't need to do that kind of stuff yeah yeah for sure it's like how do you how do you um connect with your audience and you know how do you show through whatever story you're tell you're trying to tell like a sense of empathy right to again like better connect with your audience right um you know that's like it's so hard to do well right um but when it when it's done well right like um obviously all those films that you mentioned right like when it strikes a chord um you know in your heart and it you know we we keep talking about these films you know probably forever right and until the end of time right it's like when when you stumble upon kind of that that right ingredient with the you know right chemistry with the actors you know it's kind of like the perfect storm, right? It's like an amazing, it's like, it, it's amazing just to be able to, you know, just to view those films uh, and, and to really appreciate that art. Yeah, for sure. And like, 
even expanding a bit further on um, what we've mentioned before so far mm-hmm. um obviously things like um you know spaces and physical and games yeah virtual um you know you've even got things like objects mm-hmm. like so many objects mm-hmm. in films you know you you, you can speak about mm-hmm. you know like oh, there's so many iconic ones right um and they also in a way like help to occupy the spaces that are made right um and maybe a better way to put this is you know it's like on one hand you've got like uh, architecturally speaking i guess um you can design a space but then what do you do with that space after you've you know you've constructed it you occupy it with obviously objects ornaments and what have you and obviously in the entertainment field um you know how you do that as well can really you know enhance the story even further create memorable moments and almost in a way where you know like once you do that um like those objects actually like store that memory of a particular moment like you know hashtag no spoilers but if anyone's seen breaking bad a certain box cutter has a very very big impact you know at a certain point in the story um and like you know if if you ever seen things like uh, uh old boy uh, a certain pair of like you know like, like actually i won't even mention it but you know you know what kind of object i'm talking about that has like a huge it, it ha- once you know like certain things happen and then once they happen like that object becomes synonymous with a moment in the same way like a, a space can become synonymous with like an event of some kind um you know like, i'd love to hear your thoughts more on you know your point of view with that because even in your work like you do occupy not just only spaces but um you know you do use certain objects and basically just just build out the world a little bit that that you're also creating so yeah i'd love to hear more about that like what your thoughts are on that i'd say i mean for me right now kind of with the with the skills that you know how how i've been trained and the skills that i have now i guess i do kind of take that for granted as far as okay if if i need an environment in a piece it it is kind of autopilot right like there's certain things that you know i know have to go in there and i know that there's certain details that i just need to get right as far as like you know the proportions and the scale of things right um again like i i kind of it's almost impossible for me to uh not get those details right right because you know my training as an architect i'm like the handrail has to be the correct height things have to be the correct dimension right like it's got to be right like as realistic um, as possible to in the real world right so yeah those things are definitely kind of like autopilot for me but i guess the the intangible things that that we've been talking about right like like uh how a space conveys emotion right it's like those are the things which really take a lot of experiment experimentation right like even if you're creating even when i'm creating just like a an image right it's like okay yeah like what kind of story do i want to tell right like how do how do I tell this story through the space, right? Through through the objects in it, right? Like I'm thinking, you know, again, like going back to Blade Runner 2049, you know, um, there, there's there's like this um, K has that he has these reoccur reoccurring visions of that wooden horse, which was carved right to him, and you know, we find out later that um, it was actually it was like a manufactured dream, right? Um, but I guess I guess kind of like the larger concept is, you know, an object or, or a space can have huge, significant, like emotional, spiritual um, impact on kind of, on, on just how you see, on how you see the world in general, right? Like seeing, seeing that object can, can strike, um, you know, can affect your emotional mood, right? Like just by seeing that, whether it conveys, right, like a good emotion or like, you know, a bad emotion or, you know, something that was, you know, let's say traumatizing or yeah, something amazing that happened, right? It's like, it's amazing how, yeah, an object or, or a space can really, um, can really translate that into something physical. So what I'd like to ask you is, you like, have had that training now um, of working traditionally and then also having that um, digital experience where you discover digital art and the tools and all that kind of stuff available as well and you know jump straight into the deep end by making a short film as well so you know it's clear to see that you've amassed a 
a solid skill set that encompasses um, a vast array of disciplines. So I'm assuming that that does make it like approaching projects much more easier in the, in the sense of, you know, you're kind of not limited to what you want to make. It's a case of what you would like to make. Um, but that in itself can, you know, can not cause problems, perhaps. Maybe a better, better way to phrase it is, you know, like maybe you can choose to do many things. And then that becomes a struggle itself trying to like handle um of like which which projects to make, et cetera, et cetera. Um so like how is that for you? Like do you are you okay with that or is that something that you kind of like struggle with or um do you have like a plan in place? Like what is uh what are your thoughts on that, like in terms of um making your own projects now with the school skill set that you have and like how do you go about achieving the visions? that you that you want to make or you want to realize yeah honestly that's that's a super difficult question uh i guess you know one of my i guess one of my heroes is ash thorpe and kind of how how he approaches his personal work right and how he so he's like so passionate about um you know doing something that you know like it, it's quite selfish when you think about it but i think all artists you know when 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 we create our work, it, it is somewhat selfish, right? Um, but I mean, se- selfish in a good way, in the sense that it's really important to uh, do things that are are just, you know, you're you're almost like your childhood muses, right? Like what what just excites you at the end of the day, right? So I mean, I I really like his approach, and I I really take that um, take that approach kind of in in how I do my work, um, in the sense that. Yeah, like like I have these skills in in my tool bag, but you know I'm always trying to like improve, you know, one thing or another. And it's like, okay, so like, how can like what what projects can I do to um to help me improve those skills, right? Um, and kind of yeah, take that Ash Ash Thorpe approach where it's like just 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 do something that you know you're most you're you're most passionate about, right? um and just to go yeah like dive dive into the deep end as far as whatever that subject is or like whatever that muse is right whatever that inspiration is just just do that thing right um and and i think it, it's almost like um kind of like what what people was doing right like you know he he's, he's been doing i guess what what he's most passionate about for like you know 10 15 years right um and it's it's, it's really just important to you know as as an artist just to just to really kind of believe in in what inspires you right and and to keep doing that because i think if you do that with a passion and you do it you know um with a certain honesty about it i think people will see that and gravitate towards that and continuing continuing on the theme of like tools um again you've you've been through the you know like from the beginning of like traditional through to digital um, and mm. seeing how that's yeah. impacted the way you want to create, obviously, mm. and how that's impacted your skill set and, and so on and so forth. Um, and obviously still continuing to change, like tools are constantly evolving, um, making things, you know, quote unquote, easier in the sense of tasks that would technically be yeah. tedious in the past or require a lot of technical yeah. know-how, no longer perhaps need to do so. Um, at least you know in general sense um which makes you know like a lot of roadblocks to bigger projects perhaps not quite there now Mm -hmm. um so Mm -hmm. you know like what is your take on tools and are you know does does that kind of like derail you in a way does it um excite you or is it something that is something that kind of like doesn't really bother you too much because you know your focus is is elsewhere because i guess like with, with, with software it's always a case of oh like there's something new i need to check it out but then you kind of lose track of your original journey maybe or what your original goals were or even just basic thing of not focusing on a project that you're trying to trying to complete so yeah i'd love to hear your thoughts on that i guess like you know the the tools are are always going to change. There's always going to be that next amazing tool, right? Um, but I guess 
I guess, you know, now with with technology and, and the way it's progressing, right? We're at a point where, you know, I, again, I think I think Ash Ash Thorpe kind of uh, talks about this a lot in the sense that, you know, sometimes when you see an image nowadays, you don't know if it's a real photograph or if it's like totally CG, right? Like people, like you actually can't tell the difference. And I think that's that's kind of in a way it's a good and bad thing, but I think it's good in the sense that okay it it doesn't matter how it was created it doesn't matter you know you know the, the yeah. technology is involved it's about what does the image make you feel right again like boy like you know going back to to the essence of what art has been in the past right art was always about conveying emotion yeah. and making the viewer feel a certain way right so that's it, it's kind of you know over couple thousand years right hmm. you know from like cave paintings to where we are now right where you can pretty much make anything right it's like it it's come full circle where you know maybe maybe 15 years ago it was about okay like who, who can do the best photorealistic render it wasn't about does the image tell an amazing story right like now now it's it's, it's not about that right so I, I i think that's a good thing yeah that's actually a good point and as things progress rapidly or, you know, tools change very quickly and obviously new things are added constantly. Um, sometimes I guess we can get lost or focus mm. on developing the tools, uh, sorry, the skill set of these new tools, just like, you know, exploit them, get used to them and then apply them to our. So what's your take on that particular, I guess, topic so you have perfected a craft like is it worth still learning new tools if you have reached a level that you're happy with yeah yeah that's mm, that, that's a difficult question i would say i'd say i guess as an artist um you know let's say you know you you've gone through years of training years of perfecting your craft right i i guess there becomes a point where I think it's wise to say, okay, just I will I'll stop learning new tools. I've I've really mastered the tools that I have right now, right? Uh, and I'm sure once you've reached that level, right, of ma mastering those tools, I think it's I think it's almost okay to maybe forget about learning new tools, but rather test new ways to make art, right, with with your existing tool set, right? Um, because that's like be, because you'll have those those fundamentals down right so i guess like mm -hmm. right now because you know i'm fairly young as far as you know my my career as an artist right like i'd say yeah right now it's definitely important to test new ideas test new technologies right to see what works for you mm -hmm. but um again i i think i think the idea of you know what what tools do i need to learn that's again it's i wouldn't say for me it's the most important thing yeah, I think that's a good point. Like it is mentioned many, many times about fundamentals and that will never go away. And there's a reason mm -hmm. for that because um, that's just exactly what you need. Like the the stuff that anyone really needs, mm -hmm. it's kind of the, it's, it's never secret. It's always the stuff that's kind of put out first, but it tends to tend to be the most, the, the often the boring one. Like fundamentals can be considered boring or tedious. However, you get that ingrained, mm -hmm. you get that mastered, get that conquered, then you know, everything else will just kind of happen. Mm. And obviously with tools and software, um, all, it, all it will be a case of then is just to mm. um, just get to use them. And then once you got that, once you're used to them, then you can just carry on and just create to your heart's content and just make epic, epic things. Um, yeah, for sure. And like, you know, you can even, um, I guess, no matter how much it changes, or even if you switch to a different like kind of mm. realm or medium or whatever, it won't take you too long to get back to like, you know, to a good pace of where you can just do the things that you want to do to a high level. Um, but like, you know, tools yeah. are still always changing and um nevertheless we still need to be, you know, like I guess kind of literate with them. Yeah. Um and like, you know, Unreal Engine just just arrived and it's looking like real time art is it gonna take over in a big way um at least for mm. a lot of creatives because it does open a lot of doors and it does um appear to like almost allow you to do so many things that normally a huge team would be required 
yeah to do um so does that really impact you in any certain way like does it change your goals a little bit or does it in fact not make much of a difference and it's just a case of i'll get around to it when i can um because what i'm working on and what i want to work on is not really gonna that that goal is still the core goal and that will still be the same Yeah, I I don't think the tools matter at all. Um, I think it's again more about um, thinking about thinking about what what you want to create, right? Um, that the tools are just there, right? It's like Blender, you know, C4D, any any program is just th- those. Our computer programs are no different than a pen and paper, right? It's like a sketch on on pen and paper can convey more emotion. Or the same amount of emotion and uh, inspiration to the viewer as an amazing photorealistic render, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's it's just a tool to utilize for you know us as creatives to get our vision out and across, right? Um, so yeah, like like I said, like there's always going to be you know the next amazing tool, right? It's like Unreal Engine Five just came out, and you know it's it's absolutely incredible um, the results that we're all seeing, right? And it's super like super uh, juicy as far as like, damn, I I don't want this this uh, ship to sail. Like I I I need to jump on this, right? But I mean, you know, in two years' time, there's going to be Unreal Engine six, seven, eight, whatever, and it's going to be even more mind blowing, right? So. I mean, I, it, it, yeah. There's always going to be that next amazing tool, um, and yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's just important to keep in mind, right? Like, um, yeah, what kind of what kind of images you want to create, and what what kind of stories you want to tell, right? Um, and then, and like how you create it really doesn't matter for me. Oh, for sure, and I think that's a great point to end the podcast on. Um, thanks a lot, Mike, for jumping on the podcast with me. It's great to hear your insights today. Yeah, super, super, super enjoyable. Yeah. Um, again, I love your work. I love the way you create and I love your passion for the work that you do and the journey you want to take. So um, everybody, please check out Mike's work. Give him a follow and follow along um, to his journey. Thank you. And any final, final words from you, Mike? No, I, I'd say just thank you for having me, Aaron. Uh, super, super humbled to be asked to be on the on the Learn Squared podcast. Um, I guess, yeah, final words. Just I'd say, you know, for any artists listening, just uh, the main thing, pursue your passions, right? Like even, even if you think they might be arbitrary or like, oh, this, like what, whatever, whatever I like doesn't, doesn't necessarily connect to the career path that I'm on now, you know, don't ever think that they're um, arbitrary, right? Um, it's, it's really important to to really pursue your passions right and you know they'll they'll find they'll find their way into your work one way or another um and i think that's that's important for for everyone to keep in mind awesome great advice thanks a lot again mike speak soon great thanks aaron thanks to mike for joining me for this episode it was super fun chatting with him please check out his stunning work by hitting the links below also waste no time in realizing your creative dreams by taking some learn squared courses all of our first lessons are free, which means you can learn from some of the industry's best right away. And remember to upload your journey to a homework gallery on learnsquared.com so you can enjoy it and feature it. I've been your host, Aaron Danda. Till next time.